and welcome back for another episode of the Social Hour Podcast, a podcast for sewists by sewists. I'm your host, Ashley. And I'm your host, Bethany. And on today's episode, you just have Ashley and I for another Ooh. host only podcast episode. And today we're talking about sewing essentials, the basics. Yes. What does mm-hmm. someone need to get started with sewing? So if you are thinking about getting into sewing or you're brand new to sewing and you're not sure what you need to get started, we're going to we're going to tell you our personal favorites, our go to must have notions that we reach for every time we're in our sewing room. And hopefully this will kind of help enlighten you of things that you may need to add to your sewing room. Maybe uh, rethink of some things that you've already gotten and how to use them uh, and just have some fun. We're just going to mm-hmm. just have some fun. I mean, we always like to talk about our favorite sewing stuff. So this oh, yeah. is just a fun one. <laughs> I asked Ashley to come to me and tell me like her top five sewing notions that she can't sew without. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I brought mine too. And we have not shared with each other what they are. So we'll, we'll see how many we have in common. I brought a few extras in case she has some that I have, so I can throw out some other ideas. Mm. But, uh, yeah, I'll let you go first. Like, the first thing, of course, would be, like, a really amazing pair of scissors. Yep. So what kind of scissors are you recommending? Because there's so many different types. I mean, just a pretty pair. The prettiest pair pair. you can find. (laughs) (laughs) Fabric scissors. Yes, fabric scissors, of course. So Um, I should have totally grabbed a rotary cutter. And I didn't, but you all know what a rotary cutter is. I would say I use a rotary cutter more than I use fabric scissors. Yeah, me too. A thousand percent. But the scissors that I grabbed were snips. Mm. Mm -hmm. Little snips. I use these. If I was to grab a pair of scissors, it would be my snips. Yep. Um, And then I cut my bulk of my fabric with a rotary cutter. Yeah, I do too. So mine would be the rotary cutter, but in along with that, a cutting mat. Right. That's kind of like, you can buy them as a set. So maybe it could be like one notion. You could buy a little cutting mat. Yeah, we'll put those two together. (laughs) Yeah, I would. They count as one. You can't really do it. You can't use one without the other. Really? Not really. No. I mean, I have, but I have ruined a folding table. Mm-hmm. with a rotary cutter so don't do that we, yeah, um, no when I that. when I say good cutting mat though you want to make sure you have one that's self-healing mm-hmm. um, it will last longer it's going to be a little thicker it's going to be sturdier um, it, they're just so nice mm-hmm. and then they're easy to clean and they kind of repair themselves over time and then you can always usually they're reversible some of them are and you can flip them over too um, so if you're going to get a rotary cutter and a mat Make sure the mat is self-healing. I feel like that's it's a worthy investment because mm-hmm. I've I've had mats longer than I can remember and they still oh, yeah. work just fine. So mm-hmm. I've had this one my entire sewing career. Um, yeah, but you know the good thing about the cutting mats is that other sort of sectors of the world is um, is releasing their own cutting mats. Like I found one at Princess Auto, which is a place where you I don't know. What- go and buy like car parts and tools. Well, that's interesting. And it was way cheaper than buying it at the craft store. Yeah. Do some research. Yeah. Sometimes you can buy directly from the manufacturer, like their own website versus going to like the craft store where they have to mark things up. Mm -hmm. So do some research. I've had people message me so many times when they see the giant one that I have on my Island in my sewing room. And it's a 30 by 60 inch self-healing mm-hmm. reversible mat and it was not a cheap mat i'll be honest but it fits my table perfectly mm-hmm. and it's exactly what i wanted and for me it was worth the investment because i probably will never need to buy another cutting mat again yeah as long as i have that table mm-hmm. <laughs> so um yeah i'm really excited i think that mat will outlast the table to be honest so i think if i was um, gonna choose a mat for a specific reason i would really go with a color because i have the green one and green is not my favorite color. <laughs> so not, if you can get you know, a pretty I feel one. Like <laughs> yeah, I feel like they've come out with better colors. They have. In mm-hmm. the, I have, everybody has a green one. I yeah, feel like I every, it's a rite of passage, you know. Everybody has the green one. I have I have a few, but they mm-hmm. were smaller. Mm-hmm. And so I, when I made, built the cutting island in my sewing room last year, I was like, okay, if I'm building this, I'm getting a mat to fit it. And mm-hmm. this is part of my investment in this project to, to, for my space. Mm-hmm. And I use it 
so much. It's a good size. I cut on it every day. Yeah, yeah it's great. It's mm-hmm. great. And it's a great size for my projector. So, mm. all right. So, um, what's another notion? We've talked about cutting things like scissors, rotary cutter, and our mat. So, what's the next notion that you would recommend? A good ruler. You have to have a good... And I'm still, every, all the time, on the quest for the best ruler. Because some of them don't read very well. Yeah. Depending on the brand. So, this one I've had literally forever. It's so gross. It's got paint and stuff on it. And it's not even from the sewing section. Yeah. So, like, of, I think, uh, uh, at Michael's. So, you can get these rulers from anywhere, really. You just need to find the right one for you. I have a collection of rulers. I have yeah. a really big straight edge that I think is like 24 or 25 inches long by like six or seven. Yeah, that that one right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I have a square. I think it's mm-hmm. like a seven or eight inch square. I like this one too. This is 12 and inches yeah, by yeah. six inches. I use this one all the time. Yeah, that's a good size. Um, mm-hmm. And then I have like a small one that's like a one inch by, oh, here it is. Like I use this little guy all the time. It yeah. is like one inch, one inch by six inch. I just got this guy. Yeah. And this is a half inch by eight. Mm-hmm. And this is great for just like, you know, quickly doing like a little seam or something. Yeah. Well, um, so rulers are like a must have. Yeah. Um, but even just, just like, not just for your rotary cutter, but just, I find it easier than using a measuring tape, you know? So... Sometimes, yes, and it does help hold fabric down. And with the bigger mm-hmm. rulers, you can put things on top of them to hold the weight of the ruler down. So when you cut next to it, or if you're drawing or marking next to it, it's not moving and shifting on top of your fabric. Mm-hmm. So I do find them very helpful and very accurate. And if you want to do any sort of quilting, you're definitely going to need rulers. Oh, yeah. To be straight edge cutting. Um, speaking of rulers, I'll kind of bounce off your ruler idea here. And I'm going to go very basic here. The tape <laughs> yeah. measure. You mm-hmm. need, but this is, this can come in different forms. I have this really cute one. I think it's from Hobby Lobby. <laughs> cute. This one stays in my purse, actually. Yes. Um, and then you recently did a video about the one that loops up and around. Mm-hmm. And then you can get exact measurements of things and you just, yeah. So that's mm-hmm. a fun one. It's just great for tailoring and body measurements if you're doing garments. And then the last ruler that I am going to kind of example is the sewing gauge. I did a video about this for Singer for our sewing tips of the month for February. Mm-hmm. And this like blew up. People oh, were yeah. like, I didn't know you could use this for this. I didn't know you could. And I use it for so many things. It's not just for measuring your hems. Mm-hmm. Um, which is what I probably use it the most for, and I think it's what it's kind of originally new uh, used for. But uh, I can measure the length and placement of buttonholes uh, uh, and all of that stuff too. So it's really helpful uh, with more than just hemming. It, it can be extremely helpful. And, and this little guide here moves so you can position. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a video over on Singer's Instagram about that, and that I did, and. Um, it kind of blew up. It was kind of funny. I was like, I wasn't expecting that one to be so popular, but simple. And you can mark like... it right in the center, right? For those like yeah, buttonholes and right, stuff. Right in the center. You could go on the side, you could wherever you need to. Um, so this is probably one of my most grabbed tools right here. Uh, when placing and trying to get spacing and making sure where I'm pressing in my hems are, are perfect. Cause there's times where it really needs to be. Mm-hmm. All right, so what do you have next? We've talked about rulers. We've talked about cutting tools. What would you say is another thing that people need to have when they get started with sewing? What is that contraption? <laughs> I have three, but it's okay, all just... let's hear it. They're threading tools. Okay. Especially when you're starting to sew, you're probably going to make some drawstring pouches, like th- little things like that. Yeah. And um, gone are the days of the safety pin. Because there are better That's all ways I use. to do things. <laughs> all I use is the safety pin. Or really? tube turn. Yeah. Oh. I've, I've never owned... Actually, someone gifted me... Not that. The long thing. Yeah. yeah. Someone gifted me one of those recently. I won it in like a little giveaway thing at work. And I think I used it. No, I didn't use it. My drawstring wouldn't fit through that little hole. Oh. Um, and so... I, it just it doesn't didn't work for me, so I just See, good old that's safety when pin. I would use a like a thread, and yeah. then I would tie it around the end of your drawstring, and then tie it into that loop, and then thread it. 
but mm. this one is ideally for your hoods. Yeah, so I was trying to get it to go through the waistband of my draw for my drawstring. Mm -hmm. And then the bodkin. What is that? Oh this yeah, is, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it grabs on, and then you just thread it through. And this is so cool. I didn't know this existed until like a few years ago. Yeah, I don't even own just, any of those. Yeah. They're cheap, so you buy one. just a bunch of them because you're going to lose half of them. <laughs> the first. Yes. Yeah. So you're uh -huh. going to buy lots, especially this one is thin and we'll just get into the cracks of, you know, you. this is the other thing about sewing notions is that if you're buying little things, just buy like a bunch, you know, if you, if you, you can fit it into your budget because you're going to lose yeah. them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of, look what I have right here within arm's reach. <laughs> This is my must-have, one of my must-have tools. Okay. Did, like, you're turning, you're picking out your corner tool. Yeah. So I, I, all three of these were in this one sewing caddy over here. And I know <laughs> I've got more in my sewing room. So these are a corner tool, corner pusher tool. I use these to get, like, the really sharp corners, mm -hmm. um, to run along a, a seam line to get a really nice crisp seam line before I press it. Um, or going even around curves. I know some people are like, oh, I'll just stick my pin in there. I'll do that. But these really prevent you from stabbing through the fabric. Um, and there's different ones. I've got a, a wooden one here. I've got two like this. Mm -hmm. I've got one that's got a different handle on it. Um, I've got several. There's that one that actually has a ruler built into it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, these are... And button gauge. You know what? I, my fancy term for these are the corner pusher tool thingies. <laughs> That's, I don't know what... The bone they, folder. They're, they're point turners. Yeah. But I can never think of that, so I mm -hmm. call them the corner pusher turner thingies. <laughs> That's the fancy term. But seriously, this is what takes your project... Taking a minute to do this is what takes your project from beginner to looks professional. Mm -hmm. Even if you are a beginner. Especially, you know what I mean? Yeah. It just gives you those finished edges that just takes your project to the next level. Oh, it drives me it nuts when people don't second. push out their corners. Ugh. Like my one of my puppies. Uh, it just takes like you know, four I seconds. Got, when I was making the dog bandanas, I had three corners to push. Mm -hmm. Well, really, just two because I had to turn it. But um, the, the I would run it down the se all the seams of the triangle and into the corners as well, and it just makes it so nice. Well, yeah, it's just and an then extra it, step it just looks, that makes yeah, it look more professional. It, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, that's definitely for me a must have, especially if you're sewing any sort of quilting cottons or those kind of projects, woven projects. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think I would really need it for garments unless I was doing like a collar or something that I needed to mm. point out. So, mm -hmm. um, okay. What's another one that you have? Well, We're I went through these pretty quickly. I love it. I know. We, I have my Taylor's chalk. Oh, yes. And this one is actually vintage, and I've and the vintage ones are harder and they last longer. Ooh. This one even has a it has like a um, sharpen it. it d yeah, but I I prefer this than like mm -hmm. a pencil or I always buy those disappearing ink pens and they just dry out on me. So yeah, and they don't always wash chalk. out well depending mm -hmm. on the fabric that you're using. Um, yeah. I didn't bring my chalk because. I didn't. <laughs> Not for a beginner. Uh, I felt like there. Hmm. I I brought my friction pen. Oh. So the pen, it, it's it's a ballpoint friction clicker pen, but okay. it's erasable. So you can actually use this end. If I wrote on a piece of paper, let's see here. I gotta I gotta post it for this. <laughs> While we're here. So it's a pen on one side. It's or... a pen. It, it literally is a pen. Okay. And I just write. I wrote mm -hmm. social. I know it's backwards, but... And then this side, it's not... It doesn't feel like an eraser, but it is. And... Hmm. I'm going to try to do this backwards. <laughs> See my tongue sticking out, trying to focus? <laughs> it, if I was actually sitting this down, it would erase better, but it erases. Mm-hmm. Okay, with the pen. Well, that doesn't really work well for fabric. You're not going to sit there and rub your fabric with this pen to make it erase. But right. what it does do, and what people have discovered, is you can write on your fabric with this pen, and then the heat from your iron makes it vanish oh. instantly. Okay, so the friction is, is like, the rubbing. 
it's the friction is the rubbing, but to make this disappear, you can use the heat from your iron and it vanishes instantly. So I will mark my buttonholes. Mm-hmm. Like I did like those 10 buttonholes on that pink corduroy skirt. I marked them with this. Oh. And then I stitched out my buttonholes, but you could still see some of the blue ink. And so I just put my iron over it and they just choop, gone like freaking magic. Okay? Is that something that is in the sewing stores or is that like at the no. staples or something? This is like a staples thing. This oh. is not the intention was not originally for fabric, but it works. Now, I will say if you are because my mom uses these for quilting. So if you're mm-hmm. like marking where your quilting lines are, this is fantastic. Mm-hmm. This is fantastic because you don't have to worry about anything rubbing off as you're quilting each line. You can mark all your lines with your ruler and this pen on your quilt top and you can go through and quilt it all. And then when you're done, you press it and it all those lines go away. But she's had a couple instances where the ink didn't fully go away. No, I know what it was. This is not, this comes in blue. But it also comes in red and black. And she had to use the red for one because mm. of the color of the fabric. And the red didn't go away as well. I think that's what it was. So okay. test it. Always test it. on. I tested this on a piece of the fabric before I started marking my finished project to put my buttonholes there. Mm-hmm. Always test it first. Mm-hmm. Um, I think also if it's like a cotton thread that you're running over could could affect it versus a polyester because the cotton's going to want to absorb the color. So just those kind of things you just have to keep in mind. But I feel like that's fair for any kind of marking tool, fabric mm-hmm. marking tool. You need to test it. Mm-hmm. But this is a pen and it writes very easily. It's very easy mm. to see. Um, I think the only time this wouldn't be ideal is if it was black fabric. Use your white chalk. Yeah. And you should be good to go. But yeah, this, this goes I away with that. the iron. I have a video on my Instagram where I had marked the lines um Mm -hmm. to quilt and i quilted it and then i needed to go back over and press it and all the lines just vanish and you have to watch it a couple of times to see it magic and then you're like what just happened and then it's like magic this is the most fun pin i didn't even know that existed now i need to and anything we talk about we're gonna have links in the description because i I bought these off amazon there you go well i'm gonna whole pack a whole pack like you Mm -hmm. would get uh, at the store for any other pen and you can use them to write with yeah these are not exclusive to so i could write on my fabric and then make a note on my notebook and wow right <laughs> and i don't have to have like different pens and accidentally use a sharpie on my fabric you know <laughs> like that would be bad that's cool yeah they're okay. my mom actually introduced me to them and i've been hooked ever since well hopefully so. the company doesn't know because then i feel like the price would go up uh, I'm pretty sure they know. They're a pretty big deal. I think a lot of sewists mm-hmm. know about it, especially quilters. Mm-hmm. Quilters, it's a big thing in quilting. But like, like I said, I was marking buttonholes, or I was marking. You know, I, it comes in very handy. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Nice. All right. What's your next one? Well, of course, this is a three-parter. <laughs> Ends, clips, and then I also have heavy-duty clips. You got the the clamps because you really need to have options when it comes to your yep see i brought pins and clips too these ones i use for like my bag making because yeah. you need the strong ones but you really could yeah. just get away with a little pack of pins and a little pack of clips and these clips although they're amazing they do break easily so you need to I've buy a broken lot. a few yeah and i also step on them my, my this this used to be so full that it would the lid wouldn't shut on it. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I've thrown some away on accident. So when yeah. I'm surging, um, I always clip everything, all my knits. So I was mm-hmm. up surging. I throw them into the like little waste bin that catches all your surge scraps. Oh. And I don't always get them all out. So I, I do need to add some more to my <laughs> stash. But yes, I actually prefer clips over pins. I'm not very good at pinning things. I feel like you're folding up the fabric. It's not laying as flat. It's... Yeah. Clips. Clips mm-hmm. are where it's at. It's a game changer. I don't care if it's cotton or knit or stretchy or woven. It doesn't matter. I, I just think clips are just mm-hmm. chef's kiss. The only time you really need, I feel like, pens personally is like sometimes zippers when they're on the inside. Mm-hmm. You can't really clip them to something. You know, with, like, there's if you're there's instances. A pocket on where it's like in the middle yeah, of the fabric. Yeah. It's a middle in the fat. I'm talking about edge of fabric. Yeah. Where yeah. you're joining seams, mm-hmm. seams um, clips. Yeah. all day i'm also less likely to hurt myself with the clips i said less likely i have you have 
Oh my I gosh, have you ever like stepped on one of those? It's like oh. stepping on a Lego. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I have also ended up with a needle or a pin in my toe um, because I I still walk have around yet to barefoot. Do that, but I have found a few, and I'm just like, I don't know. Someone's yeah. watching over me because. <laughs> I'm I like, literally looked down one day and there was one sticking out the end of my big toe and I didn't even realize it. And I was like, oh, oh that's where God. that went. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. As long as it doesn't end Always up in like, our dogs or something, I, I'll take one for the team. I have gotten I have gotten better about it. Um, okay, so my next one is going to be... Ooh, I have, I have like two left. I... I'm going to say this one first, just because I feel like it comes with most machines mm. and you're going to need it mm -hmm. and you're going to probably want more than one. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I don't even have mine here. Yeah. The same ripper. <laughs> As a new sewist, you can't, there's, there's never been a person who's gotten away with not needing. Uh, as an experienced sewist, yeah, I was using this one the other night. True. Yeah. And part of this is because you trial and error. Mm -hmm. I'm trying new things and new techniques and trying to like probably sometimes cut corners because I'm that person. And so it kind of ends up me having to use the seam ripper or I didn't get the look that I wanted. So I'm going to adjust things and mm -hmm. take, take the seam ripper to it, but um, invest in some good ones. The ones that come with the machines tend to be really small. Mm -hmm. They don't always have that little red ball there yeah, on the end. I noticed that. Um, I should have made a little sample here, but I didn't. There's a video over on Singer's Instagram that I did for our sewing tips of the month for February. Literally one for every day um, for a whole month. So when you're using a sim ripper, you can use the pointy end to kind of lift up the thread and get it started. Mm -hmm. But when you're cutting between two pieces of fabric down the seam and you want to do it quickly, turn this over and put the red ball in first mm -hmm. and run that through there if you do it the sharp end you're probably going to cut a hole in your fabric yeah and tear your that. fabric and then you can't redo it and we've all done that mm -hmm. um so a lot of people don't realize they want to go in like this and it's okay to get started and pick that top thread out and get it started and loose and then kind of separate the seam and then turn it over and then go yeah. right through there uh that's the safest and best way to use a seam ripper but get a get a get one with a long handle i have a really nice wooden one mm -hmm. that um one of Brett's friends uh, did, he turned it, it's wood, and he turned oh, yeah. it on a, a wood turner, and one end is a seam ripper, and the other end is a, a stiletto, mm -hmm. like that little pointy end. That's another thing I um, definitely recommend, a stiletto. You know, I don't use the stiletto as much as I do the seam ripper. Mm -hmm. So, I didn't bring it, but... Yeah, a good seam ripper. Invest in a good one. I just recently got a new one in my indie stitch box, and it's got like a big round handle, so it fits in your hand better, which I really like. I got this one. Yeah, it looks just like that. Yeah, just like that. I and I like the handle on that one. Yeah, I got this from a supplier, so they were like cheap, so I bought a bunch of them. But they do get <laughs> dull quickly. Yeah. So like, you don't want to spend too much. Oh Unless no, they're inexpensive. Like them. Yeah, they're know. inexpensive, but but I actually have two of the to... same ones. <laughs> yeah, is there I a just way have to them sharpen around. these things? I don't know. No. I don't think it's really worth the hassle. Yeah. I say just get a new one. Uh, what's your next one? What's your next An ironing board? Must have. Okay. Now, like a mini I'm one. Assuming everybody, most people have irons. So, but if you're you know, lacking on space, I would make one. This is my me made ironing board. It's just a piece of yeah. wood with some batting and cotton mm -hmm. over top of it. But I feel like you can't not get away with ironing your projects. <laughs> you have <Yeah>. to. <laughs> let me show you. I have a travel pressing mat. Hold on. Let me show. You. Okay. So when I do like tutorial videos and stuff, I can't really set up a whole ironing board in here. Mm -hmm. So I bought this from Hobby Lobby. It looks like a little trapper keeper, <laughs> if you remember those. Yeah. Ah, oh, and it's even got a grid on it. That's cool. And it's actually accurate. Yeah. I, I actually checked it because I was like, it's fabric. It may not be accurate. It's pretty dang close. Hmm. Um, so it's a pressing mat. So I can press and I, I can put this on my table right here ah. on my overhead camera and press and show that in the videos and stuff. So... Yeah, and it folds up, and I can travel with it, like, to work and stuff when I need it, so... Yeah, it's um, perfect I if keep you're it in here in my studio. kind of safe on space. 
I have a, yeah, a large Yeah, but something like that would be perfect, like, in between or right next to your machine, right? Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. why I made this guy over here. Which I have a tutorial. I know a lot of quilters have, like, a mini pressing mat or even those wool pressing yeah. mats. Like, the ones from, like, that we saw from Aliza when we had them on. Mm -hmm. um, they are great for pressing, like, for quilting pieces and stuff. So, if you're doing stuff like that and you don't want to have to get it from your machine every time you have to press in between each step of sewing mm -hmm. having that with a little iron next to your machine can make your project go by a lot faster and more efficiently oh so. yeah nobody wants to get up yeah. and down a million billion times <laughs> right mm -hmm. all right so the last thing that i have yeah i don't have anything else <laughs> i have one more i am you went first so i will end it uh okay. with my my sewing uh tools it, and I, this is the only foot i'm bringing to the table <laughs> It's the walking foot. I feel like I've been on a tirade lately uh, talking about the walking foot. But honestly, people have been trying to make like jeans and new projects that are mm -hmm. challenging. And I love to see people challenging themselves with their sewing. But this tool right here can be a total game changer when quilting or sewing heavy fabrics or even sewing delicate fabrics that are slippery. Yes. Because this is a walking foot. Some machines come with them. Some machines don't. Uh, but you can buy them. Just make sure you find one compatible for your machine. But mm -hmm. basically how this works is this goes you know the bar that comes off the where you screw in the needle sometimes mm -hmm. it's the actual screw that comes off that you screw in the needle this sits on top of that bar so as the needle goes up and down this goes up and down mm -hmm. and this attack in the the whole foot attaches right here at this ankle uh to the post on your machine so you will take off the ankle that your feet feet attached to you take off that whole ankle and there's just a post and this slides onto that post and screws right in and this goes above that bar. And as this goes up and down, you see the feet. Mm -hmm. You see these teeth. They uh, move up and down. So it's basically this right here is what's on the underside of your machine, uh, underside of your fabric as you're sewing those feed dogs. This is just duplicating that for the top. So that way they're working together to feed the fabric through from the top and the bottom. It's amazing. And it even, it even they're called even feed walking feet. Mm. A lot of people just call it a walking foot, but it, it helps even feed your fabric through. So if you're sewing with delicates, slippery fabrics, heavy bulky fabrics, quilting with a bunch of like your quilt sandwich, yeah. Um, I've even done where like a non-stretchy denim where I was trying to attach a very stretchy Sherpa to, to it, to make a mm. snuggle sack. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, one fabric wants to stretch, the other one's not going to, and this helped it feed through. So it is sewed evenly all the way around and I didn't have a lot of extra Sherpa at the end and a big gap. Um, yes, that's so it. they're, they're a little clunky. They're a little noisy because they are clunky, but they are worth it and they just take 30 seconds to attach to your machine uh, mm -hmm. and and can make a project go from frustrating to enjoyable. Real those quick. are one of those things that like, I remember getting one and I was like, yeah, I don't know what this is. And I just put it <laughs> to the <laughs> side. It looks too complicated. I'm not even going to. I helped someone recently and she was like, I don't even, I think I may, my machine may have come with one of those. I just kind of threw it aside and she found it. She's like, I didn't even know what this was for. And that's what this is. So well, it, just it looks, looks like, intimidating, but it's not. When in your mind, you're like, I'm just a beginner. So that clearly is a very advanced foot, but it, it actually looks helps advanced. you as a beginner. It can. It, yeah. Yeah. When you're learning to sew and get comfortable with the machine, this is going to evenly feed it through. Mm -hmm. Just like makes I was, it easier. When I was making like baby blankets and I put like the mm -hmm. satin ribbon around the corner. Yes. Of it, I never used yes. a walking foot and I had so much this. difficulties and that's, yeah. I so if your realize. machine I thought doesn't it was just some... me. No. 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 If your machine doesn't have a built-in walking foot feature, mm -hmm. which some high-end machines do, like my FOF has a built-in IDT system, which is a built-in walking foot. Mm -hmm. So I don't need one of these because I just lower the bar in the back and it makes the whole thing act right. that way um, and feed. Uh, but this is great for most machines, and I use this on all of my Singer machines. So... Yes, it's a must-have, um, and if your machine comes with it, don't be scared to try it. Yeah. <laughs> if you need help putting it on, send me a message, and I'll walk you through it. That's what I did with that other girl, and she was like, this was so much easier than I thought it was going to be, and it really is. I promise. Once you do it once, you're like, well, I should have, I could have done that. Mm -hmm. It wasn't so hard, so don't be afraid to try new things. 
I have a really good go. video on how to put a brother walking foot on, which is a very common. That one that you have there looks a little different than the brother one, but um, I have some that have, full video some have on the my bar. YouTube channel. Some have like a little yes. claw that mm -hmm. kind of goes, and, and it's the same concept. Yeah. It just looks a little different, but that one, yeah. they're, they're exactly the same thing. Works the same way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So we have gone through a lot of notions. Mm -hmm. I feel like we really covered a gamut, but just picking a couple of these things and trying them out. You don't have to get all of these to get started, but I feel like just knowing that there are tools out there that can make your sewing projects a lot easier. Maybe, maybe seeing some of the ones we shared kind of helps you understand what maybe some of the instructions of projects you're trying are mm -hmm. recommending. So you actually mm -hmm. can put in a, a name to an actual product. Um, but yeah, there's tons of resources out there and there's always new sewing notions uh, and products coming available to the sewing industry. And I think that's what makes it so much fun. And, you know, being in the industry, like I am working for, a sewing brand, three sewing brands. Uh, there's always new stuff coming out and, and the machines themselves are getting like even more powerful and smarter and more technology and like artificial mm -hmm. intelligence. And it's, it's just wild. It's really fun to see how technology we already are implementing in our homes through voice command, you know, uh, devices are now being implemented into sewing machines and other products and I just, I just envision my future where one day I can walk into my sewing room and be like, Alexa or whatever, yeah. turn on or wake up my sewing space <laughs> and, and all everything. of my machines turn on, my iron turns on, some soft music starts playing in the background, my projector turns on, the lights are on and everything's, my iron's warming up and it's just like everything. <laughs> and then it tells me like, Alexa, what are my projects for today? Oh, today you're going to be working on this <laughs> quilt block and this garment and you need to do this today. And don't forget to film this today. Awesome. Thanks, Alexa. You know, <laughs> and it's like, you know, those kind of reminders. Like, I feel mm -hmm. like that would be just mm. Mm -hmm. icing on the cake, cherry on top. And that's not for everybody, but for me and for how much I spend time I spend in there and balancing work, school, personal, everything else I do in there. I'm fun, fun sewing time. I think it would be really helpful. Mm -hmm. It would be really nice. But anyway, you're, you're over there I, with the fancy sewing machine and I just got a machine that cuts my thread for me. So <laughs> you know just what, that though, alone is a bit. Okay. So let's talk about machines for a technology. minute. Cause I feel like this is a, a topic where everybody has an opinion on what they like and everybody is right in their opinion. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to start out. You find what works for you. Yeah. Um, but uh, for a beginner, I feel like a mechanical machine mm. is perfect. Mm -hmm. You don't need to spend a lot of money. You can get a really nice mechanical machine um, that you don't, that's not going to overwhelm you with too many bells and whistles, but it's going to still sew beautifully. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I personally, uh, you know, I have all these Singer machines over here because I work for them. Uh, if I have a project that I need to sit down and work on, it, it doesn't matter which machine I'm going to do it on because of the what I'm doing the project for, I will typically grab one of the heavy duties. And I didn't Mechanical really know they existed. Or computerized. Yeah. Until I met you. <laughs> uh, they're just, they're just so well-rounded and they're, they're built to last. They're very sturdy. Mm -hmm. They're, they've got a full metal frame. I mean, I don't need to sell you on a machine here, but yeah. I'm just telling you personally, if I was going to grab one off of the shelf. You can sell a wide range of projects with it. I'm not as limited, yeah. even if it's yeah. a mechanical, I'm not as limited as the type of material I can sew with it because it mm -hmm. will do denim and leather and faux leather, but it also do lace and silks and satins and, and knits and whatever in between. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you really have a little more range of what you want to try to sew. So if you're new to sewing and you don't know what you're going to get into yet or what your niche is going to be because you're just testing the waters, it, it could be a good option. And, and the mechanical heavy duties are very affordable. Mm -hmm. You can find them on sale all the time. Um, and I personally really, really like them. Um, but that's not to say that there's not some really good white machines out there as well um, and other brands. But out yeah. of the ones that I have here, they're the ones out of all the ones on the shelf over here. They're the ones I typically grab for first, but I've, I'm comfortable with them. Mm -hmm. You may not be. So again, this is my personal opinion. So for you, Ashley, mm -hmm. uh, you use a computerized I do. machine. And Very you mentioned fancy. a scissor button. 
you mentioned the scissor one, uh, the scissor button, and I do, I do love <laughs> a computerized machine. Uh, so out of those heavy duties, I usually grab a computerized mm-hmm. over mechanical. Oh, okay, so they have I'll... a computerized. Oh mechanical. yeah, they have a few. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, then and that's probably so usually a happy will... medium for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I. The computerized is uh, it's going to have like those features, like the scissor snips mm. and the needle up down button. Um, mm. You know the the speed control, the start stop. Um, I'm just looking at one sitting next to me, and this one's not a heavy duty, but it's got all of these features on it too. The mm-hmm. the knot off, the tie off. Um, oh yeah, they don't all have all of those, but some of them do. Um, so I'm looking at the an embroidery one of the Singer embroidery machines sitting next to me, and it has all of those right there at the head of the machine, the backstage. Mm-hmm. All of its computer is just a simple button, and so it's nice to have those extra features. Yeah. To to use. Um, so See, I, I would have. I, I, I would like have recommended like an entry level machine, but now that I know that the heavy duty exists, then it's like. You don't even know where you're going to be with your sewing journey. Like, you're, yeah. you're da- like, I started with quilts and then I went to bags and then I went to purses and then I went to garments. Like, you just don't know where you're yeah. going to be. So, to right. be able to have that wide range of right. projects and I well, mean, hands and the, down. And the heavy duties are, even at the mechanicals, are very affordable. Mm, I they consider are. them entry levels. Yeah. So, you know, why, why have to, why spend around the same amount for something mm-hmm. that's not going to do everything you want it to do. Mm-hmm. That's just me, but it's not for everybody. And mm. sometimes you get, sometimes honestly, if you can get one handed down to you, you can thrift one just to get started to see if you even mm-hmm. like sewing. Right. That's fine. Yeah. When you're ready to start investing in a machine and you want to keep it on the cheaper side or affordable side, uh, but you want something really good quality. I really like them. But there's mm-hmm. other good ones out there too. So I, I've, I've had several other brands before and I can't complain. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it's also knowing how to properly use the machines mm. as well. Mm-hmm. You know, now when it comes to computerized, I, I most, uh, mostly will draw towards them. One of the biggest difference I noticed when I upgraded from mechanical to computerized machines years and years ago was just, how much quieter <laughs> the computerized <laughs> machines are. Yeah. So if that's important to you, like maybe mm-hmm. your sewing space is next to your child's room and you're sewing mm-hmm. at night, a quieter machine might be nice. I mean, it's not super quiet, but it's still a sewing machine. But I've noticed, I notice a big difference there. I mm-hmm. don't know if you do. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So that's important to some people. Um, I, <clears throat> as you, some of you may know, I have a, top of the line Foff machine because I work for the company. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, you know, got a good deal on it. Uh, otherwise I would not, not be able to <laughs> afford this machine on my own. I'll be honest. I feel very blessed to have it. I don't show it off a whole lot because, um, I know it's not something that it's mo- unrelatable most people, to most. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there are people who can obviously do that, but, um, and I'm very blessed and fortunate to be able to have it, but, mm. Um, it's, it's definitely not attainable for a lot of people. Um, especially people our age. Yeah. You know, I mean, you got kids going to college, you're not spending this kind of money on a sewing machine, Mm -hmm. uh, that costs more than my car that's in the driveway, but that's okay. (laughs) So, but it's really, but it is cool. It is a cool machine. It's cool to see it work too. Yes. Yeah. So the things that it can do, I mean, I could sit here and talk about that all day. Mm. It's got this huge LED screen on it. It's all touchscreen. Uh, it's massive. It's not a machine that you're going to like travel with or take around town or move around. It it's with. set up. I would love set for you it to and travel leave with it. it. Huh? I would love for you to travel with it. I want to play with it. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a beast. It's a beast yeah. of a machine because it's also an embroidery machine. So it has a big embroidery okay. arm as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so it does hi- like really nice embroidery. It's connects to my Wi-Fi. It, I can access my entire embroidery, my Sonet library and projects on it. It has video tutorials on it for anything that you would need to do on the machine. Wait, um, on when it? It's, yeah. It's on the like, screen? Oh, Yeah. Wow. It's a big screen. It's like, That's it's a big insane. screen. I'll have to measure it. It's a good size screen. Um, when I turn, I turn the machine on and then I, I leave it on and I'll use it when I need it. 
the days that I'm sewing at home, like usually mm-hmm. on the weekends, uh, cause it's a personal use machine. And, um, but when I'm not using it, the screen kind of like goes to sleep, mm. but mm-hmm. while it's in sleep mode, it plays videos of the machine like up close of like the feet or different features of the machine it has all these like videos that would normally play if it was on display at like a store oh, okay right so those kind of stuff. videos and you can turn that off mm-hmm. but i like them so mm-hmm. i leave them so i look over and my machines get running these and they're silent but they're like good quality like movie <laughs> videos i'm like this, this machine looks good it's very inspiring like to just look over it and is. Like, okay maybe i'll make that <laughs> Yeah, it's really cool to see the the innards of, you know, this machine and how it's come together. And they show some Mm -hmm. really cool videos of it and accessories that go with. There's so many accessories that go with this machine. It's it's a lot. Mm -hmm. I know. And um, so it's a it's a fun machine. I'm still learning a lot about it. It's not out of the three brands for the company that I work for. It's one that I don't work with as much, but Mm -hmm. it's really nice. So Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm enjoying learning uh, more about it and all the features and things it can do. Uh, but it's all touchscreen. So like I pick my stitch and I can adjust my stitch. I did it. Oh, the skirt that I made with all the buttonholes, mm-hmm. the button foot isn't like a normal button foot. It like plugs into the back of the machine and everything. I saw that. Crazy. Yeah. It's, it, it took me a minute. Actually, there's a help button on the screen. So you click the question <laughs> button and then you click on what you need help with on the screen and like, tells you um and so i'm like oh okay this is how you know this works and so i figured it out but it it walks me through it it really is nice nice. yeah um it's got it's got a camera on it for like precision placement for your embroidery designs precision yeah um it's got lasers so if you're like quilting Mm -hmm. and you can project lasers at different angles and different colors you can project grids on the fabric so you could sew in straight lines or wherever you need to uh, follow the laser. <laughs> it makes it really nice. That's crazy. And then it has artificial intelligence. So I can pr- uh, use it with my Alexa device and I can ask mm. it to select a zigzag stitch, set the stitch to this width and this length, and it will for me. I don't have to touch any buttons. Wow. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> I mean, I had the opportunity to get it. Oh, yeah. So it's like... You could not. I know, right? Yeah. I got it last summer, and mm. it's just, it's pretty. Well, I'm coming to your, to your house, so I will. <laughs> I will be touching it. Maybe not using I it. I know. But I'll touch it. No, <laughs> you can absolutely use it. I want you to. It's so fun. It's a fun machine, but it is not a beginner's machine. This is someone who, for someone who, um, one, has the, the, the money to spend mm-hmm. on that, um, or an opportunity to get one for a good deal. And then... Um, you know, does a lot of sewing. A, a lot of quilters yeah. and garment makers will use these machines. Uh, mm-hmm. A lot of embroidery people will use them. They're not industrial embroidery machines. They're not like the tin needle ones or anything like that. Mm-hmm. It's a single needle, single color at a time. But it's, I've embroidered some cool stuff with it. Mm-hmm. And so it's really cool. I love it. So jealous. <laughs> I, I would a, a, two years ago or even a year ago if you said oh you'll have one of these top of the line machines I would have laughed in your face but the opportunity presented itself so I took advantage of it yeah for sure and so I would go the other thing that. that I got uh, as an employee um, I I upgraded to the which I've shown this one quite a bit on my Instagram mm-hmm. is my serger and cover mm-hmm. stitch in one mm-hmm. and let me tell you I have got my money's worth out of that machine right there uh, with my garment sewing because I use that kind of machine more than I do a regular home machine. Mm-hmm. So it is an air thread. It's computerized. It's touchscreen. Uh, it's programmable. Like it walks you through how to set up the machine for all the 27 stitches that are already programmed into wow. the machine. So each one will tell you like the needles need to be in these positions. There's like five different needle positions. Um, it's five thread, which, which threads mm-hmm. to thread. Um, it's auto tension, auto differential feed. You tell it what fabric you're sewing with and it just auto sets everything. Like, let me tell you, this thing is like, <laughs> I will be buried with this thing. I am in <laughs> love with it. I'm obsessed with it. Um, it's just, it just makes it yeah. so foolproof. I don't know how else to say that. Sergers like, can be finicky, especially with like the tension and stuff. Like I still haven't figured yeah. it out on my little brother back there, but yeah. 
be able and to I'll eliminate you, that. I still, I still work with the regular surgers and everything. I mean, mm-hmm. I have all the singer ones here and everything. Um, and after using this leather ones, the Viking ones, so much, mm-hmm. when I have to pull out one of those, I'm like, hold on. <laughs> what do my tensions have to be? Because my other machine just does it for me. And I right. kind of get this handicap and I have to remind myself. Uh-huh. Um, but I use the other ones. I like them. They still so great. Um, but this one is a so a serger and cover stitch in one. So it saves mm-hmm. counter space because my I mom has the machines. Husqvarna one that is both. Yeah. But would you believe if I told you that um, she didn't know that it did both? And she thought <laughs> she was only buying a serger? Oh, <laughs> And I was like, Mom, this is both. She's like, oh. like." And why she probably was, went out and bought a cover stitch, too. Why do you think it was $2,000? Yeah. Like, and it's not, like, air thread and all that stuff. So at the time when she bought it, like, that was a astronomical That's a lot, amount of yeah. Money. That's why it yeah. was both. But. Yeah. No, it's... They're expensive. Um, yeah. But they're... Mm, they're worth it. This yeah. one... Is air thread, but not with a pump. It's an actual mm. electronic air thread. So you hit the button and it, it's mm-hmm. it's so cool. Um, so when I switch between like my four thread overlock to my cover stitch, I just move the needles. I rethread it in those and from a four thread to a three thread because mm-hmm. I do a narrow cover stitch, and I take off the plate, <clears throat> the serger plate, and switch it to the cover stitch plate so it, mm-hmm. it covers that area put the knife down the blade Mm -hmm. down um and i switch it to that setting and i rethread it and i tell it i select the stitch on the screen and it it's that simple it takes me maybe a minute to switch it all (laughs) um and it's really easy so and it comes with all the tools you need to do that and um that's a good option for people who are trying to conserve space and i think a lot of people don't know that that even that that's a thing that you can have one machine that does both well, and if you're doing a lot of garments like I am, yeah, it's it's worth the investment. T- to be honest, for me, um, it, this the Viking. The reason I got the so, Foff has one that's very similar, but the reason I got the Husqvarna Viking one, which is the Amber Air S six hundred, that's the one that I have. It's like a rose gold and burgundy. Mm. It's really pretty. <laughs> so pretty. <laughs> it's so pretty, uh, which also helps me love it more. But it it comes with an extension table. Mm -hmm. which a lot of sergers don't No, it comes with an extension table which is nice and i usually leave it on uh but it has these holes and you can drop a pin and you can put your fabric on the machine drop a pin at the center point of that fabric and you can make a perfect circle so remember when i did those circled Mm. face wipes like a face wash rag kind of thing Mm -hmm. for makeup removal and one side is like that soft baby flannel and the other side's a terry cloth and i did a rolled hem edge Mm -hmm. on the serger um with it and i pivoted on that point Mm -hmm. uh and made perfect circles so good and that's hard to do on a serger without that <laughs> it is you, so you need to practice a lot yeah so i i did that and i had a lot of fun and made it very fast but mm-hmm. um this machine it, you it has this feature called the joy of sewing and the joy os and it you basically it comes with the viking line um and you basically can say i'm gonna i'm surging uh medium weight knit fabric so I select that on the machine. I select my stitch. I've got it all set up. But then I tell it I'm surging a medium weight knit fabric. Mm-hmm. And it automatically adjusts the tension and differential feed. Wow. Oh, and then I, then maybe I switch to like a medium weight woven that I want to surge. I select that. There's light, medium, and heavy for both woven and knit. Mm. Which yes. is really nice. So like yes. these sweater knits that I've been doing, I've been doing more of a heavy yeah. weight or if I'm surging a denim, it's a heavy woven, and it mm-hmm. it automatically adjusts it. It's so cool. amazing! The technology it these it literally days. takes the guesswork out of it. But I I understand that these are things that I acquired because of my job. Yeah. But it's cool for me to you know I don't share it a lot because I don't want to be like oh look what I have you know mm-hmm. that is not me at all. I have I love my singers. Don't get me wrong. I love my other machines that I have. But um, they don't have all these bells and whistles. I feel like I can do a lot of the same stuff on all of them. Yeah. But sometimes it's cool to see what technology, how technology is impacting this, the sewing industry and, and 
some of the things that are out there. So I know you brought another item to the table. And these these last two things that we're going to share, these are like things that Ashley and I have recently added to our sewing room. So we wanted to share some basics. We wanted to talk about machines a little bit. But now we're going to just share with you our what we would say is our bucket list items, I guess you could almost say. Like, you don't need them. But man, That's they are nice. a game changer, and we've we've graduated to the point where we've we've invested in them, yeah, um, and and had them. So, uh, if you want to share what yours your your uh, favorite tool, uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> that this needed is, a sound effect. <laughs> everybody has an iron, of course, but the Aliso has that technology that lifts it off your table, and yeah. honestly, like if you're doing a lot of sewing, a lot of quilting. To be able to remove this motion saves it your helps wrist. With the hand. Yeah. And I think that this is worth its weight in gold, to be honest. It's the nicest one. This one, the newest one they have, has diamond ceramic flow. It's a ceramic. It's, I've never seen anything like this before. It's mm. like, you know, your flat irons. It has yeah. it evenly distributes the heat a lot better. Got a nice huge water tank. Like it's just I like and- how the water loads in these. Oh, me too. I love that. It's on its side. Yeah. Look at that. It just lifts right there on its side and, it's and you just like pour it in. Like- so then you're not spilling it down the whole iron. I typically do that mm-hmm. on the irons that stand up because <laughs> I'm a yeah. klutz. But yeah, no, I do and like them a lot. Such pretty colors that it just adds style to a little your pop of color too. to your space. Yeah, because yeah, the are... ones at the like Walmart are like silver and black and white and just boring. Yeah, like, come on. Why, I mean, nobody really likes ironing, but if we're gonna have to do it, let's make it fun. Yeah, exactly. The up down motion on this does take a little getting used to. I mm-hmm. keep, I keep wanting to turn my because it's just have like muscle memory. You want to like stand it up when you can. Yeah. But this is my uh, second, so I've had years yeah. to figure this out. But this is this yeah. is Bethany's first. <laughs> Yeah, and it's really fun. It's it a good is. steam iron. But mm-hmm. do you need one that fancy to get started no. with sewing? No. So these are things that we've we've uh, grown into. Is yes. that a good way of saying that? Grown yeah. into? I still have my old right. iron. I mean, it's a backup. Oh, I don't throw them away because no. those are perfect for like, you know, they get something on them. Yeah. And or you're like, like I don't want to press do my nice curler beads or something. Yes. Yes, I go. save it. I have a yeah. craft iron just yes. for that because my yes. son loves those. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> You're not using my nice iron. Oh my You're not God. using my work irons. Have you seen um, that on TikTok where it's like, oh, what is it? Um, like how that person died or something. The TikToks where like the guy walks in and he goes to cut open a package with the sewing scissors. And then it's like, oh, I forget, oh, yes. I forget what it is, but it's like. This like the perfect way to get divorced. Yeah, <laughs> use exactly. use her fabric scissors to cut paper. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the quickest I, way. I, I forget how it goes exactly, but it's just like yeah. If, if I walk in and there's a child using my iron for perler beads, Mm-mm. it's not gonna be pretty. Murder. <laughs> <laughs> murder we're gonna see you on like 2020 <laughs> crimes uh what is one of those crime shows or podcasts you know i love my true crime i'm gonna be like listening one day and all of a sudden i'm like i thought ashley kind of disappeared oh now i know why she's been incarcerated okay, someone so- used her fabric scissors someone used her iron <laughs> no use my fabric scissors don't use my iron yeah okay with that fabric scissors are easy i have used my fabric scissors i'm not gonna lie I cut my my zippers with them. Like I'm not a yeah. good I'm not a good sewing person when it comes to my scissors. But I, I went and bought like an industrial sharpener. So yeah, I sharpened you did. myself. <laughs> that helps. I don't yeah. have that. I I do have dedic- I have like the pegboard in my sewing room. Mm-hmm. So I have this this peg is all the fabric ones, and this peg is all the non fabric ones, and then these are like the old ones that are kind of rough. Yeah. And I just can't throw away. I don't but you know have why. like the sewing ones, and then those ones get demoted to the other ones, and they just keep going, right? <laughs> get new ones. Yeah. I got like four different rotary cutters, but I really only use one. Yeah. <laughs> I have a favorite. Everybody yeah. has a favorite. Yeah, <laughs> but you can't get. You can't. You can't. Oh, I don't know why I can't let the old ones go. I have emotional attachment to mm-hmm. things that I shouldn't in my sewing room. You have a Maybe party, and everyone needs a pair of scissors. You are ready. 
Yeah, if, if people come over to sew, they're not getting my favorite ones. <laughs> no. My favorite scissors. I'm sorry. Love you, but no. <laughs> All right. So my, my bonus thing that I've recently added to my sewing space that I feel like has been a total game changer and Ashley recently <laughs> added it too. So I'm going to, she's over here going, me, me, me too. Um, is the projector. Okay. So this is fabulous for garment sewers, but you can project crafting projects and quilting pieces and stuff yeah. like that too. Mm-hmm. I think for garment sewers is where it really comes into play. Um, I, if you haven't been following me on Instagram, you have, <laughs> You may not have seen that I've recently added this to my sewing space, but a little backstory here. I've had that projector for over a year (laughs) and I probably spent a year researching projectors and I bought three different ones before I ended up with the one that I have and I had to return the first two. And then by the time I finally found the one that was Uh supposedly the one for my space, uh, I was so mentally done with it. That it's, I put it on the shelf and it sat there for over a year. Mm-hmm. And I finally said, okay, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. And I finally got it set up. Brett helped me. It, it was a process. We called in reinforcements with Sheridith with Projector Sewing, who is going to be on the podcast in, in March. We're su- super excited to have her on um, and talk about projectors even more. But she was a wealth of knowledge. Helped me. Helped Ashley. Help Diana. She's helping everybody I know mm-hmm. start getting their because pro- all of us have had them. Well, Ashley, she just got one, but Diana is the same boat as me where yeah. we've had them and they've just been sitting there because we just get overwhelmed by it. Mm-hmm. I'm just not that tech savvy when it comes to stuff like this. And so she, between her and Brett and myself, we figured it out. And I have made so many things with that with my projector already. Mm-hmm. Um, and the first time I cut something out, projecting a pattern onto my cutting table with my projector. It went so fast that I, that I kind of stepped back and was like, what am I going to make next? No, I was just like that. That's all that that like took me like three minutes. I know. And and that was just like all those wasted hours of printing and cutting and taping and, but I, I'm going to play devil's advocate here for a second. (laughs) I had a moment of what, I guess I thought I didn't like that process, but Mm. now I kind of missed like that that's always been part of my process well you'll still always sudden, have a within, few patterns within a blink of an eye it's that process is gone i don't have to tape any more paper patterns mm-hmm. together mm-hmm. unless i want to and i like that i don't have to tape and cut yeah. the p- pieces out but there's something about holding the paper pattern and placing it yeah that part of it i was like oh i feel like i'm missing a step like that was what it was for me. It wasn't so much missing the process, but missing a step. And I felt like that went too easy. Like it shouldn't have been that easy. Mm -hmm. Why did I wait so long to do this? (laughs) Yeah. And now I'm like, okay, well that wasn't, that was great. I'm kind of like that where it's like, I'd rather read a book in my hand than read it like on my phone. It's kind of like the same thing. It's It's kind of that. Yeah. yeah. But once you, once you (sighs) go projector, and you, you save could. the time and you can sew so many more things so much more efficiently and you're not wasting so much paper and ink, which by the way, ink is expensive. So mm-hmm. you're not wasting all of this paper and ink to cut out these pieces. And, and then you're like, oh, I hope that I cut the right size. Yeah. Especially I for like, say, for people who have children who their children are yeah. obviously growing from year to year and having yeah. to do that for so every you, single. So you cut it once in this size and then by the time they want you yeah. to make it again because they've outgrown it, you got to cut it, print it and mm. cut it again. Yeah, no. And I had a pattern that I projected the other day and I chose to project the two sizes mm. and I, while cutting and it's projecting onto my fabric from the ceiling while I'm cutting, I am grading between two sizes. Mm-hmm. And it was so quick and easy. Yeah. So but you could also easy. put your paper down. And if you wanted to make sure that you graded it correctly the next time, you could trace that out with paper and a pencil. So that, you know, because you might not the next time you make it grade it properly. Or you might forget that you even graded yeah. it to begin with. So you still yeah. have that option that you can make the paper pattern in that way, which is awesome. You can too. totally project down to paper and yeah. cut out paper um, yeah. and save it. And I know a lot of people that do that because mm-hmm. um, they want to make a custom pattern mm-hmm. and not have to project and cre- recreate that custom size every time so they mm-hmm. can paper it. Totally doable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's just nice. It's nice. Yeah. Also, can I just say I, my new favorite thing, 
And y'all are going to laugh at me. I set a mood. Mm. It's it's sewing after dark for me. Yes, I don't yes, know. Yes. Put the candles I, on. I get done. I guess. Yeah. Okay. So I get done with dinner. Everybody's fed. Everybody's kind of winding <laughs> down for the night. The teenager's already like recluse to his bedroom. Brett's already like asleep in his recliner in the living room. <laughs> and if I have the energy to get up and go back to my sewing room, I go in there. I shut the door. I light a candle or something. Turn on my little wax melts or whatever. I put on some music with my Alexa and I turn all the lights off. I turn on my projector and I usually have my machines on. So there's like this little glow from my Fof and a glow from my Viking and you know, the they're, they're just around. It's an ambiance. <laughs> it is a mood. And I'm just in there and I'm like jamming and I'm throwing fabric down and I'm cutting and projecting. And it's just, I don't know. So nice. And I am all of it's like it. having a warm bath because then even like the projector <laughs> kind of creates some warmth too right it, in the room it's just <laughs> nice mine doesn't mine's really small but it's oh. just the the hum of it and then yeah. the music mm-hmm. uh the lights from my computer screen and then it's like when i get done cutting i'm like i don't want to sew this i want to keep cutting stuff so i find something <laughs> else to cut out and then because my room is very bright during the day yeah uh I, i've got these two big windows i don't have curtains i just have these like shades so they still let a lot of light in i can't get it dark enough during the day to easily be able to see it i can cut but it's just it's so much easier to see the lines when the room's really dark so at night i have dimmers on i have like nine can lights in there in that small Mm -hmm. space so it's very bright but at night i can dim them all the way down and i can see everything it's really it's just i don't know yeah i love it yeah it's just I'm it's not a vibe. Lie. Yeah. It's a vibe. Mm-hmm. It's my jam. It's made me really love my space more. Mm-hmm. I didn't think it was going to have such an impact on my sewing space like it has. I thought it was just going to be some eyesore on the ceiling, uh, to be honest, right in the middle of my room. You wouldn't even know I had it. <laughs> Most people like, don't see mine. It's so small, but mm-hmm. yeah, it's not so bad. Yeah. The I cords, the cords running across the ceiling. I need to tack up yeah. better. But yours is against the That's wall. Okay. Mine's in my ceiling. I took a tile yeah. down, but it's I have a light in front of it that you can't even you really don't even know it's there. I'm surprised it works because of the lights that I have and I have like a camera mount and stuff. But I was able to just get it in like this like little sweet spot and I'm able a little to- jerry rig. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. Brett made a little mount for mine because if you're not familiar with my our, our listeners are not familiar with my space, it was a one car garage on my mm-hmm. little 50 year old ranch house and so someone previous owners had converted it to an interior space so it doesn't have a garage door it's actually a built-in wall and it's all enclosed but uh in the garage was the attic access so the ceilings are really low so Mm -hmm. from ceiling to floor is like seven feet two inches max and that's like and the ceiling's not even there's spots where it's less than that and so i had to get a short throw projector Mm -hmm. because the regular projector like you have i didn't have enough clearance between my table height which is tall Mm because it's a cutting table and the ceiling so i had to get a short throw and so these are the this is the reason why i went through so many different projectors because my space is kind of unique it's usually not that challenging for people but again when we have sheridith on in a few weeks and we talk to her she can explain a lot more of the Mm -hmm. technical side of that and everything and make it less scary I wish yeah. I had had Sheridith from the beginning. If I had had Sheridith help me from the beginning, I would have been using a projector for a year and a half to two years now. Right. That's and, sa- and I'm the, just disappointed in myself. And your experience <laughs> probably... kind of scared me because I thought that, yeah. oh, no, like, I have this weird drop ceiling. Like, am I going to be able to be able like, to do it? Mm-hmm. And I got my projector and I had it up, like, two days In later. two days. <laughs> yeah. So you did I'm it really like, fast. Yeah. It's kind of irritated. No, just kidding. <laughs> I'm happy for you. I'm so happy it was so easy for you. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I love you. Uh, <laughs> love you, mean it. No, I'm happy for you. And it should be easy. And Sheridith makes it easy. Maybe if I was there with you when I, like, a year and a half ago, I could have helped. Too. Yeah, you're more tech savvy than me, though. <sighs> a little bit. A little, a little, a lot of it. <laughs> Let's be real. Let's be real. Well, this has been fun. I feel like we've shared mm-hmm. a lot of our, like, personal faves from yeah. beginner sewing notions to types of machines to 
bucket list items, right? Like, I feel like we've kind of run the gamut here. And again, this is our opinion. Yeah. These are our experiences. Everybody's mm. is going to be different. There are going to be people that have different opinions, and that is a okay. Uh, feel free um, to drop those what, in the comments section. Yeah. If you're on YouTube, we'd love to know what your favorite notions, you know, especially yeah. when you were a beginner. That's a great what, question. Yeah. What got you What through? is your must-have? Like, if you're in your sewing space, what is your must-have, mm-hmm. like, notion that you're always grabbing for? Yeah. Um, let us know. Maybe there's something we don't even know exists. I I'm always looking true. for new things. To We're always happen. learning about new things. Can I show you this little thing real quick? Ah. <laughs> That's it's a- it's a it's a plastic ramekin from the dollar store. Ah, okay. It's a little cupcake ramekin, and it's just stuffed and sewn and glued in, and it's a little pin cushion, and this little is like a little cherry on top. I think What's my mom made of it? this. It's just uh, stuffing like a poly. Oh, okay. Like really you tight. You know what people are saying that they that's my pin cushion. It looks like a cupcake with sprinkles. That's so cute. Um, do you know what they they say that they put in pin cushions though to help to keep your pins sharp? Um, the shells, the walnut shells. Yes, walnut I'm shells. still trying yeah. to get my hands on some walnut shells. I don't eat walnuts, and I keep telling my mom if because she she'll get them like around the holidays. I'm like, save the shells. Still have yet oh my to gosh. find shells. Yeah. I actually, you know what? Let me go grab something that I got recently as a gift <laughs> to show because it has those in it. So, hold oh on. yeah. Okay, so at work in January we had an education week and we had to bring like a like a ten dollar gift. It could be handmade, it could be store bought, but something sewing related. And mm-hmm. we did like a kind of like a white Santa. Like you go around the room, mm-hmm. everybody rolls a dice based on the number. It, there's rolls. You have to pass three to the left. You have to exchange. You have to open. All these things. And you pick a gift and you go. So I ended up with a gift uh, from one of our educators. And it had that pool thing that you... That's how I got that pool thing that you were showing earlier. Mm. For the drawstring or whatever. Yeah. So um, that's how I ended up with one. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't still have one. But one thing that she had made and was in the gift... What's this little guy? Oh my goodness! Isn't he cute. It's a little mouse, <laughs> and this is actually a coat hanger tail, and it can store your bobbins. Oh, that is so sweet! And it's got a little wooden base on the inside here, and it's actually quite heavy because what's on the inside is those crushed walnut shells. So I could even use him as a pin cushion if I wanted to. Did she make that? Just like that. She made it. <gasps> that is so and cute. And she sent me the pattern, so I might try to make a couple of these. How yes. cute is that? So cute. So, uh, he needs a name. Maybe if you guys want to comment and the <laughs> leave a comment, what should I name my little mouse? Isn't mm-hmm. he cute? What's the? Is that just like uh, embroidery thread that's like super thick? It's some sort of like yeah, it's a thicker or like industrial thread maybe. It's it's like a. It's a thicker thread. It's got like little, whiskers, little whiskers and little bead eyes. These are just beads, yeah. Well, we're gonna that are hand yeah. stitched in. He needs a name. You should post um, that on so, your social media so people can see how adorable that is. <laughs> I know, I know. I, I need to. She also made this. It's a little footstool. <laughs> it's like a little ottoman. <laughs> it's a little ottoman and it's felted. She felted this whole thing, and it's another little pin cushion. That have you ever done felting? Cute. Look at the little I have feet. They the stick things out. to do it, but I have not yet done it. <laughs> I am fascinated by this. Me too. I've seen some like felting tutorials and they're ridiculous. It's so cute. It's ridiculous. It's so freaking cute. That's adorable. And she put a few pins in there. So I was like, oh my gosh, it's so stinking cute. But I just love the little feet on it. Like, See, those are the things that will make you smile when you walk into your sewing room. Yes. Yeah. And these sit next to, these sit, uh, sit between my two sewing machines. So cute. My little mouse and my little foot cushion. (laughs) I just love them. So we've talked about a lot here. (laughs) We've shared a lot of our favorites and must-haves and wish list items, bucket list items. 
just again, all of our personal opinion, but we hope you may have learned about something new that you didn't know. And if there's a tool out there, like Ashley said, that you feel like we totally forgot about, please mm-hmm. let us know. We share that. This is how we all learn from one another. And that's the whole point of us doing these podcasts is to share and learn from each other in the sewing community. So thank you guys for listening. Uh, next week, we have the lovely Duana Chandler on the podcast, which I follow. I've been following her for a hot minute, y'all. And she this is amazing. girl is so talented mm-hmm. and she his she just has a natural gift for sewing and is she's only been doing it for a little while but she has just exploded and she's making patterns that's she's crazy done a know me pattern so yeah i'm excited to talk with her mm-hmm. and let you guys get to know her a little bit better um she's she's so sweet so awesome well guys thank you Thank you for hanging out with us today. We'll see you next week. Be sure you follow us on YouTube, on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. And as always, we have our Thirsty Thursdays. Uh, If you're not aware of that, we started it this year where we have some bonus content for our members only over on Patreon. So you have to be a member over on our Patreon. We'll link that in the description below. But that is exclusive content that we do not share here anywhere else Mm -hmm. so it's really fun it's a little more off the cuff and who knows what we're going to talk about over there so hang out with us over there and we'll see you next week Bye. bye guys